Hello there. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Notice the beautiful surroundings. Actually, I'm in the hospital undergoing infusion therapy. There it is. I'm being infused for multiple sclerosis, which I've had for the past 10 years. In case any of you don't know what that is, it's an autoimmune disease in which your body attacks the myelin sheath that covers your nerve cells. In other words, it's exactly the same thing as having an electrical system with bad insulation. What happens is that the signals go awry and things start to go wrong. For example, walking becomes more difficult. Some of you have noticed in the comment section that my voice tends to jump around sometimes. That's another symptom of multiple sclerosis. It basically degrades everything in ways that we don't need to go into. So I apologize for the lighting, for the scenery, for the ambient noise surrounding us. I decided to do this because I have to sit in this bloody chair for seven hours and undergo this infusion of this stuff, which they hope works, but they're not really sure for a disease they can't cure and don't know anything about other than the fact that it's miserable. It really is astonishing. So in addition to diabetes and coronary artery disease, and of course we have a pandemic, I'm dealing with this. And I am not saying that to complain. I'm saying that just to explain what the situation is. Actually, it really isn't going to stop me from doing anything because as long as I can talk, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to be doing these things. And I have seven hours to kill. So with seven hours to kill, I figured, what the heck? First of all, I brought my glasses. There, that makes a difference. So with seven hours to kill, I figured, what the heck? I have something that will take up the time. Here it is. It's the the Brilliant Classics 160 Disc Haydn Edition. You should have seen the look on the receptionist's face when I brought this into the infusion suite. Well, anyway, I'm not sure where to start. I mean, do we start with the 209 folk song settings or maybe the 126 baritone trios? Oh, what a difficult choice, really. But we have all these discs, so we go through all of them individually if we feel so inclined. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna, you have to be crazy to do that. No, no, no. What I'm here to talk to you about, very simply, is what am I listening to? What am I going to use to pass the time? Much as I love Haydn, I am not going to talk about and listen to 160 discs of Haydn. No, my, my feeling is that you need a particular, I need a particular type of music to help me get through this. And the reason is because when they start you out on this goop they're trickling into me, they, they start you with a couple of Tylenol. Then they hit you up with some Pepsi to keep your stomach settled. Then they give you Benadryl you know, to deal with any allergic reactions to the, the stuff that they're infusing you with. And Benadryl makes you very tired. Then they hit you up with steroids, which makes you neurotic and crazy. So I am tired and crazy and neurotic all at the same time. And I think that if you want to try and get through this and retain your sanity and actually enjoy the music you're listening to, you need a particular type of music. Number one is you don't want something that requires a lot of concentration. I mean, you know, I'm having hard enough time concentrating just to talk to you. I mean, if I start to sound a little bit off, it's the Benadryl and the steroids and the stuff that they're they're pumping into me. So I apologize in advance. No, seriously, you don't want Mahler's Ninth Symphony. You don't want Tristan and Isolde. You don't want anything that's going to be that's going to be ruined by having constant interruptions and a lot of surrounding noise and other things that you're supposed to do. So I found three titles for this particular visit. I have to do this twice a year um, that I think will help me while away the hours. Most of them are folk song, folk inflected, nationalistic song and dance type things. Why? Because the tunes are really catchy. They grab you immediately. The, the tracks are relatively brief. There are a lot of them. You can stop whatever you want. You can pick up where you left off. You don't feel so bad. It works really well. The first thing that I was considering, and I'm going to play you samples of all of these, were Janacek, the Lachian Dances. 
you know, everyone loves his Sinfonietta and Taurus Bulba, and we're going to talk about those in extenso. But the Lachian dances are lovely. They're really direct sequels of the Slavonic dances, only they use, excuse me, only they use genuine folk music. Whereas Dvorak, of course, invented all of his own tunes. I, I'm going to play you the second one of them a little bit, just so you get a sense of it. These are wonderful performances with, with Anthony Witt and the Warsaw Philharmonic. Take a listen. isn't it? I mean, it's just, it's just great stuff. There's nothing not to like there. And they're charming and effective and tuneful and brief, and that's just perfect. Next, there's Norwegian composer Gert Veit. I really don't know how to pronounce that. There he is. I call him Gert Veit. I mean, when you go to Norway, they call him Gert Veit, and so you can sort of figure out, you can basically see anything you want, I think. He wrote these pieces called A Hundred a hundred Hardinger tunes, or a hundred tunes from Hardinger, the Hardinger region. We don't think he ever got to a hundred. He had a very, very sad life. He was a very prolific composer. He kept all of his unpublished manuscripts in a barn, which was made of wood, which was not a good idea, and it all burned down. And so what we have of him is what was either published or performed before he died that was not kept at home or things that have been recovered from the smoldering ruins, which it's possible apparently some of the stuff to pry out the manuscripts and it's very time consuming and costly. But there are four suites of Hardinger tunes and uh, 15 tunes each. This one, this disc, Biss has recorded all of them and Naxos has recorded all of them. And the, the, the suites two and five are respectively mountain songs and troll tunes. I don't know what a troll tune is. I've never seen a singing troll. But I'm going to play you a bit from mountain songs number five, which is, which is let's see, one, two, three, four, yes, bringing strong ale up into the mountains. That's the tune. Most of these things are either about booze or animals or girls. It's really very straightforward. There wasn't that much to do up in the Norwegian mountains most of the year, and that's what they sang about. So here is bringing strong ale up into the mountains. terrific arrangements and the nice thing about them actually is that is that the settings are kind of quasi modern sometimes almost bartok like you know the it's not your usual saccharine sweet folky stuff you know what i mean but however my all time favorite my favorite favorite thing um, in the post slavonic dances ethnic song and dance things are skalkotis 36 greek dances why doesn't anyone listen to Skalkatis' 36 Greek dances? By any rights, they should be as popular as the Slavonic dances. They're wonderful settings, very sophisticated, beautifully done. Skalkatis, of course, sends fear into the hearts of many because he also wrote a lot of 12-tone or dodecaphonic atonal music, which is quite gnarly and difficult. But he also was a, a nationalist and an an ethnographic nationalist, and the, the 36 folk song settings are, the 36 Greek dances, pardon me, the 36 Greek dances are absolutely splendid. Everyone should have them. The whole set has only been recorded once that I'm aware of on BIS, and they are wonderful performances, and you also get 
his sort of epic tone poem, The Return of Ulysses, which is in his gnarly style. And it's a wonderful contrast. I think they're all wonderful. The, the whole thing is great. It's a two disc set and it's just fabulous. So here is number three of the 36 Greek dances. Don't you listen to that and wonder where it's been all your life? It's absolutely terrific. So those are my selections for music to get infused by. Uh, I really think that it's good for anything where, you know, you have to sit around and you can't afford to focus too intently and you know you're going to be interrupted. Here they have to check my blood pressure every 13 minutes and as they, as they up the dosage to see what, what kills me and what won't. And then after this is all done, here we go, let's straighten out. You have to sit here for an hour to make sure you don't have any adverse reactions. It's just an incredible pain in the ass. But on the other hand, it's better than losing my mobility completely. <laughs> and, you know, hopefully this stuff they've given me will do something about that. You never know. One way or another, I'm going to keep on listening. You do too. Thank you and take care. <laughs>